can draw the inference, we will start from this uh, point. Uh, okay, so <coughs> let us very briefly review what did we did uh, uh, last class. So, but remember, uh, if you have n sensors, uh, say you have n volt meters and you have to measure certain voltage and you have sensor S1, S2, up to Sn and assume if you have tested them in a lab using some super precise uh, uh, reference voltmeter you can obtain what their variances uh, are i, right, which is uh, the expected value of uh, measurement by sensor i minus the true value and then squared, right? That's the variance of the uh, height sensor, right? And you also, you have uh, here variance v1, v2, all the way to uh, vn. <coughs> then, uh, what we show is that if you assume that the errors uh, are Gaussian normally distributed, right? Uh, then, and they are independent uh, stochastic quantities, uh, uh, random variables, right? Uh, then the optimal way to get the true value, <coughs> the, uh, uh, the best approximation of the true value of the measured quantity is not to pick the sensor with the smallest variance, the most accurate sensor, but actually the best estimate uh, is obtained as a weighted average when you take into account all sensors, no matter what their variances are, in, so even the sloppy ones, uh, and you weigh the measurement of each sensor by reciprocal of of its, oops, sorry, this is I, reciprocal of its variance, and then you have to normalize all the weights should sum up to one. So here you will have sum uh, J equals from one to N, <coughs> one over VJ, some of the reciprocals of the variance is right, times the measurement of the height sensor. So if you measure the quantity with all of n sensors, so what is this? This is essentially a <coughs> weighted sum uh, vi times the measurement of the height sensor. i goes from 1 to n, where the weight given to the measurement of the i sensor is a reciprocal proportional to the reciprocal of the reciprocal, right, of the variance sum normalized so that all the weights, in order to get a proper mean, right, <coughs> all the weights sum up to 1. So, VJ. So, here is, right, obviously the sum of all uh, these weights will be um, equal to uh, 1 because that's necessary and of course all weights <coughs> vi are not negative this is uh, uh, necessary and uh, sufficient condition so that uh, uh, this uh, linear combination behaves as a, as a mean in particular, it will have the property that the final estimate will be somewhere between the largest and the smallest estimate, right? Yes? Isn't there a square on the bottom of it? No, it's just, so this is kind of 
quadratic term, right? So it's uh, uh, you are probably confusing this with the voting algorithm where we normalize so that some of the squares adds up to one. Here we normalize weights so that they sum up to one. Some just right. And lo and behold, for the case of sensors with uh, Gaussian errors, one can show that no, uh, no estimate of any kind that is unbiased can beat this estimate in the sense that this estimate has the smallest possible variance, namely the expected value of the estimate minus the true value mu squared is as small as possible. So there is simply no, uh, let's um, put this, uh, so this is S uh, that uh, uh, combines uh, uh, this vector of measurements uh, M, right? Because this is S of, depends on the measurements, right? So it's a vector of measurements. Right, and in fact, one can show that the uh, variance of S, you can do it, you have it in the notes, you can do it as a simple homework just by uh, replacing this sum here and squaring uh, and uh, lo and behold, uh, you get that the variance is actually one of the, of the sum of the reciprocal of all variances. Right, which is essentially 1 over n times uh, the harmonic <coughs> uh, mean of the variances, uh, of the vector of uh, variances. Right, because n over this is just the harmonic mean of the variances. So it's actually very small. <coughs> now, uh, this is kind of what theory says, but this fact is not of very much use in practice. Uh, I mean, it's not very much use in computer science. In computer science, <coughs> very often we are not measuring uh, on some objective uh, quantity. Uh, one, one, uh, one of <coughs> applications in computer science is to aggregate, uh, so you have a, a redundant system that has several sensors uh, that measure temperature in some, say, chemical reactor, right? And you can test the measure the sensors in the, in the lab, and you can, in fact, find pretty good uh, estimate of their variances, and then you can really use this optimal way to deduce the real temperature from the measurements of the sensors. But most of the applications in computer science nowadays are when the sources of information are actually humans, right? So <clears throat> what can be sources of information? Again, like in voting, this can be market analysts. Sensors can be market analysts. And instead of just giving discrete recommendations, uh, you know, uh, strong cell, cell, neutral, buy, strong buy, they can actually predict, for example, earnings per share. Or they can try to predict uh, the, uh, the share price after three months. Right? So it's no longer a discrete choice between uh, five options. Now these numbers are real number values. 
Another example, important example, is uh, assume that uh, you, as I mentioned last time, that you are running a conference uh, and you have n referees, uh, right? And each referee uh, evaluates a bunch of papers and it gives you marks. Very often, uh, to decide which paper you accept, you simply compute the average score that a paper gets from multiple assessors, right? But this is really not a very good way of doing it whenever humans are involved, because humans vary, right? Uh, their attitudes vary, so some people are extremely stringent what marks they give and then to give lower marks than, uh, than the rest, which means that, in fact, even if you knew their variance is maximum likelihood wouldn't be the way to go because the maximum likelihood estimation is optimal only if the sensors are unbiased if on average they give the true reading. But if you have a marker, a referee, who he thinks he is the only smart man in the galaxy, uh, he is likely to be very biased and to give low scores. Some referees might be excessively generous, yet some referees uh, might not take the job really seriously and may just glance through the paper so their mark will have huge random component, essentially, right? So the question is then taking a mean is a very bad thing to do because if a paper is unlucky to be refereed by a person who is cynical and gives only low marks, if you find the, the mean, the mean can be greatly skewed by the average, right? I'm uh, sorry, the mean can be greatly skewed by the uh, outliers, uh, right? Uh, if, uh, if you happen, you know, if guys give a, a score 75 to a paper and then someone gives it 15, if you have three referees, then of course the score of the paper will drop, but not by the merit of the paper, but uh, simply by the randomness of the choice of the referees. So you want to find a way that should work well in, so to speak, all possible circumstances, which means it should work well when there is a bias. If the referees are unbiased, or sensors are unbiased, and have Gaussian distribution of error, your estimator should produce something very close to the maximum likelihood estimation, despite the fact that you don't know the variances, right? Uh, and even more, <coughs> which is extremely important for online applications, uh, you know, uh, a good essentially scoring system, <coughs> good way to aggregate uh, uh, marks or scores, uh, should have the property that it is reasonably robust against collusion. What is a collusion? For example, say uh, you are running a conference and you have two competing groups, right? And so uh, one group decides uh, they have a kind of good sense who is the author of which paper. If you are in the field, uh, you can kind of guess for especially kind of prominent members. And they all decide to downgrade the marks. So even if multiple sensors decide to downgrade the marks, uh, the score should be still robust. And not only that, uh, but there can be more sophisticated ways 
of collusion attacks. <coughs> if you know that, for example, system, the system is taking the average, and you have five people colluding, what do you think? What would be the best way to, to skew the scores? Well, they can all, for example, give low scores. But assume that the system is somehow clever and can figure out that there is a collusion, um, then the attackers can actually come up with more <laughs> clever ideas. One of them discovered by a student, a former student of mine, that would proceed as follows. If you have five guys, four of them will vote uh, as outliers, uh, say, if they want to trash someone, would give very low scores, say, of zero. The fifth one will calculate the mean of all of the score of the scores, assuming that they would evaluate what the true value should be. But instead, of course, voting for the true value, he finds the mean of the true value uh, uh, plus the, the, the mean of the true value and the value given by the four outliers. Now, the fifth attacker looks to be the most objective, right? Because he is the closest to the mean of all, right? So four of them try, are skewing, and the fifth one is pretending to be the most accurate one by voting for the mean of everything. So the honest assessment and the, the outliers. So you would want your system to be also resilient for this kind of more sophisticated uh, attacks. Uh, and uh, you know, this, uh, this is really a problem that is prevalent uh, uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, today because uh, you know, people evaluate uh, well, products uh, uh, or evaluate movies and things like that. So making a robust aggregation algorithm is one of uh, really important tasks uh, for online applications. So the first method that we showed last time, so what is the situation? Again, we have the same sensors. But this time, we have no variances. And moreover, if some of the sensors are dishonest, we don't know who they are. Right? Somehow, we would like our systems, system to automatically um, kind of adjust for the presence of outliers. The, the first method that was uh, by Loretti, I believe, uh, it's the, uh, the most uh, famous uh, one and the oldest one. Um, it was introduced uh, of all places in a uh, physics uh, journal. Uh, I really don't have a clue why. Maybe it is, in fact, for aggregations of the values of the, of the sensors uh, when you don't know their variances for physical measurement. Their idea consisted in the following. OK, so you have these uh, N sensors, S1, S2, up to Sn. And they're making multiple measurements, for example, over time. So this, so M1, uh, T is the measurement. Uh, let's put the uh, discrete values here. M1i is a measurement of sensor 1 at uh, instant uh, i when i goes, say, between 
one and uh, say in total t many measurements. And similarly here you have uh, m two i, so we can put a bracket and put here i between one and t. Then here you have the set of measurements of the second sensor at the same instance, measuring the same quantity, and so forth. And here is the measurement of the end sensor at uh, instant i, when uh, i is again between 1 and uh, t. Now, all what you got is this matrix of measurements. For simplicity, this is really not necessary at all for the system. Um, it, uh, that uh, you have measurement of each sensor at every instant in time. Uh, maybe each sensor makes measurements of several instants in time, but not necessarily all of them. Okay. So if you have this matrix M, right, of uh, the measurements of the J sensor at instant i. So here we will have J going between 1 and n, and i going between 1 and t. Your task is just knowing this and having absolutely no other information about the sensors to optimally aggregate them their measurements, right? And as I mentioned, <coughs> the usual way is simply to take the mean, right, uh, of each column, right? At every instant in time, right, you simply average readings of all sensors, but as you will see when we run the simulation, this will be uh, not a very accurate way of doing it. Okay. So, how, uh, what do Loretti and company, there are several authors on the paper, propose that uh, this be done? Idea is this uh, you do what's called iterative filtering algorithm. The idea is to iteratively determine simultaneously. <coughs> what a good estimate of the true value is and how accurate each sensor is and then cycle. So assume that uh, we have the true value, uh, let's call it uh, uh, value at instant i, again when i goes between, I mean we, uh, we don't have this but we would like to estimate that this will be true values. So the idea is to iteratively make estimations of the true value and estimations of how accurate each sensor is and iteratively improve the estimates. And the idea is this. Uh, you start with uh, S at um, uh, zero round of iteration at instant i will be simply sum m of all j i when j goes from 1 to n divided by n. So this is just a simple mean. Right. Um, so you see now the situation is as this. Uh, so this uh, 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 say uh, this is the true value v uh, at instant one. This is the true value v of instant two, and so forth. But you don't know that, right? Uh, so here the measurements of your sensors, the readings of your sensors, right? Say this is sensor 1, this is sensor 5, this is sensor 3, this is sensor 11, this is sensor 7, and so forth, right? The first round of iteration 
will simply take as estimate at zero, this will be instant one, and maybe here it will be S at instant two will be here, and so forth. Well, these are the, which will be just the mean of all the meetings. Now, the idea is uh, <coughs> you can now uh, roughly judge how accurate each sensor is uh, by looking what is the distance uh, between uh, readings of each sensor and this original, uh, this initial estimate, uh, right? So now I can form this, right? Uh, this of uh, at uh, in or uh, iteration zero of a sensor J or quadratic distance. We can simply take this as, or we can even put, okay, let's put the square root. So it's the sum of uh, a measurement of sensor J at instant I minus S zero, right? Squared, and then uh, you can, if you want, you can take the square root, but usually, so this is the square of the distance. So this is just the mean of all readings, right? And so you simply see how far is the reading of sensor J over across all the instance of measurement. So it will be uh, for sensor one it will be this uh, squared, and then if this is sensor one here, um, it will be uh, this squared, and then you sum, right? So essentially, this is just the square of the norm of the vector of the measurement of the J sensor and the initial. Estimate. Are you with me? Right, it's simply the distance. So what is the idea? Even if this is very rough, this will still give me some sense of how far the measurements of the trade sensor are because outliers will be far away from the mean. Right? But what is this? If I divide this, uh, uh, so this divided by two by the number of measurements t, it kind of approximate, approximates the variance of sensor um, J, so this of J is kind of a rough approximation of the variance because we are assuming that this is the true value and these are the measured values so this is simply the distance is just the divided by t is just an approximation of the variance in fact it would be slightly more accurate if i put t minus one but uh, this will not hold in subsequent iterations so let's combine so now the idea is uh, now you can improve your initial estimate Right? Because you already have a rough estimate of the variance. So I'll use this formula where VI is replaced by this approximation of the variance. Right? So in the next round of uh, iteration, um, so in the essentially in the first round of iteration, we will have a new estimate. Uh, we will form estimated instant one, 
uh, Vi will be the initial estimation of the variance. So this will be initial estimation of the variance, right? Uh, let's call it, uh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, let's call it just V0 of J. So the variance, so, right, times Mi. So now, we are no longer taking average of everything, but we are weighing the measurement Ah, I here I should have, a, let me put it uh, uh, like this. Sorry about this, let me keep consistent with the, the way what we do here. So this will be uh, J, and this will be J, and this will be K, this will be K, and this is MJ uh, at instant I. So this is S0 at instant i is equal to this, right? So now we are averaging the readings of the J sensor with weights. Each weight is approximately a reciprocal of the variance, right? Once we have so this will be estimate one. Once you have estimate one, you can get variance uh, one of sense of J as a, uh, when you divide by T of sum of M J I uh, when um, I goes from 1 to T uh, of uh, MJI minus S, but this time the improved estimate 1 and then squared. Right? So that this is the new estimate of the true quantity and the new estimate of the variance. Now I can get even better estimation of the true quantity by using the newly obtained variance. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And I can keep iterating until hopefully things stop changing much. Right? So the idea is uh, start with a rough estimate of the quantity measured by taking a simple mean of the readings of all sizes. Use this as an approximation of the true value to compute approximate variance of each sensor. Use thus obtained variance of each sensor to form maximum likelihood estimation with this variance. And then use this new estimation to compute new variances and keep doing it until this est vector of estimates stops changing much. So do you understand the, the process, uh, the whole thing, how it works? Uh, any questions? Please stop me. So you see, in this course, because I just want to teach you what's really out there and what's being used, and unfortunately everything like uh, page rank or uh, this max, uh, the iterative filtering, or for example, recommender systems, they all involve basic mathematics mambo jumbo. Yes? Uh, is it worth putting a minimum value on the variance? So if there's some, is it worth putting a minimum value on the variance? So if there's some sensor reading between the mean and the true value, does it converge on that? Very good. So. You see, the problem with this method, as you will see, is that if in the process of iteration, the estimates get close to the values of a particular sensor, this sensor will get very low variance 
and consequently it will get almost the entire weight. His weight will be almost one and everyone else will get um, value almost zero. So your suggestion is very uh, good. Uh, the suggestion is to cap how small the variance can be, right? How small the variance can be so that uh, this can never get too small and thus this cannot get excessively large. Well, let us see how this functions in practice on this example. So this is an implementation, mathematical implementation of uh, this Loretti algorithm. So I took a simple sine curve to represent the temperature reading uh, over 24 hours, right? Uh, at night it drops cold, during the day at some point it achieves its peak, then everything cools down, and we have how many sensors? We have uh, 25 sensors making 288 readings, which will be one reading every five minutes for 24 hour period. Now, <coughs> we will consider two cases. In the first case, the variances will be chosen randomly in the range between one and five, okay? Uh, in the second case, uh, in the second case, the variances will be one-fifth, two over five, three over five, so they will increase in the equal big increments. So let us see, in the first case, so let's look first at the implementation. Mathematica is a God-given software for anything, uh, anything that involves, it's a hopelessly slow, well, it is slow if you are doing kind of massive simulations, then you would use MATLAB that is lightning fast. But Mathematica knows it's such a high level of language, it knows just extraordinary amount of math, uh, just absolutely phenomenal amount of math, including special functions and uh, um, uh, just